God bless the stockyards. My name is Brother John. I'm here to proclaim the gospel message to all of you because we believe it is the message that saves. In the third chapter of the gospel of John, Jesus said this to Nicodemus, who was a ruler of the Jews, a Pharisee. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. And that was an amazing statement for Jesus to say that to Nicodemus. Nicodemus was not only a Pharisee, but the head Pharisee there. He was a devout man who dedicated his life to God. He read the Bible daily. He prayed daily. He fasted. He tithed. He did all the things that he thought he knew to do to serve God. And he was also an expert in the law. And yet, for all of that, Jesus Christ still told him, Except ye be born again, they shall not see the kingdom of God. And if that was Nicodemus, how much more is that for you and I? That phrase that many Christians preach or they say about, they say born again, and yet few Christians actually know what that means. And part of the reason for that is the Bible doesn't give out a clear-cut definition of what it means. But as you read the Bible, you will start to discern that being born again means being born of the Spirit. It means being one of the children of God. And I'm here tonight to share you with a little more information of what that statement means, what we can discern from the Bible. And one thing being born again means is that you have faith. In the book of Hebrews in the 11th chapter, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That is what faith is according to the Bible. It's a confidence in what we hope for. And what we hope for is for Christ's return. What we hope for is the blessings and the promises that he grants to his people will be honored, that we will receive them. And we have the faith that when he died on the cross and when he was resurrected, that there is power in that, that he was able to conquer death, making his words true, that we too can conquer death. We give our lives to him. We too can receive forgiveness of our sins. And we too can receive eternal life. To have communion with the Father. It also means that this life has a purpose. That we're not mindlessly drifting through life. That we're not just an accident. That there is a God above it all that created all the things. And has a care for you. That's what it means to have faith. Even the Apostle Paul said in one of his letters to Timothy, a famous passage that people know at the end of his life, he said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. Meaning the faith was an ongoing thing. It wasn't a temporary one moment in time that throughout his life, even with his doubts and the fears that he may have experienced, he continued to keep his faith in God. He continued to keep his faith in God's promises. And that's the commandment that he gives to you. That's the commandment I give to all of you that you receive it, that you walk in the faith. For that is what was required of you if you were said to be born again, if you truly believe that you are a, one of the children of God. And yet a second element to being born again is hope. In the book of Romans, in chapter 5, it reads, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And we also rejoice in the glory of tribulations. And tribulations means hardships, and that might seem strange to you. Why would Christians celebrate the glory of tribulations? And this is why, as it says in Romans 5, it says, because through tribulations we develop patience, and through patience, we develop experience. And through experience, we develop hope. And hope maketh not anyone ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroadly upon all of our hearts through the Holy Ghost. For the Christian who believes, the Christian who is born again, 
who walks with the Spirit, they have that hope. And that's a powerful thing in a world that's full of distractions and bitterness. Whether you are the Christian or the non-Christian, you will still experience many of the same things. You will still experience heartbreak. You will still experience depression. You will still, still experience illnesses, sudden deaths to people that you love. And yet the difference between the Christian and the non-Christian is that he or she has the hope that there's something more, that there is a purpose to all these things. And then as Christ was resurrected, that purpose, that promise can be shed to you, that you too can be risen up, you too can be changed, you too can be delivered. But the Bible also says the righteous shall not be put to shame. And then the third element in the Bible it says is about belief. And the Bible says in the 13th verse of the 10th chapter of Romans, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And then going further in the Gospel of John in the first chapter in the 11th verse beginning, Talking about Jesus, he said he came to his own, and his own received him not, yet as many as received them, he granted them the right to become children of God, for they believed in his name. And they were born not by the blood, not by the will of flesh, but by God. Notice what he is saying there. He's saying these gifts and these promises are available to all people. We see it in the seventh chapter of Revelations. It uses the fourfold meaning of saying people, nations, kindreds, and tongues. That talks about all people everywhere. They have the option, the ability to receive this gift. They have the option and the ability to become children of God. They have the option and the ability to be filled by His Spirit. But in order to do that, to be filled by the Spirit, just as John the Baptist said, we must decrease so God can increase. That means you must let go of certain things in this world. You must let go of your pride. You must go of your selfishness. You must let go of sin so God can shape you. He can mold you and He can fill you up with His goodness so He can fill you up with the fruit of the Spirit. As it says in Galatians 5, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the gentleness, the self-control, all these things God offers those who are faithful. And yet, many people will hear this message from a street preacher or a loved one and they will give their life to God. They will get baptized. And for a moment in time, their heart aligns with God, and that is a beautiful thing. And so if you haven't given your life to Christ, I call out to you to think hard about this. Think hard about where your life leads, where it is going, what will happen to you in the afterlife, and to think about these things now, especially when the message is calling out to you. For the Bible says, those who have an ear, let them hear. And if you have not given your life to Christ, I hope tonight is the night that you will take these words to heart. And yet what I also know, having preached many times on the streets, here in the stockyards and elsewhere, there will be many professing Christians who did at one point in time become baptized. They did believe in Christ. They believed in the changing power that He had in their life. But somewhere along the way, they went back into the world they slowly started to drift away. They slowly started to give their hearts to other things. And the Bible warns friendship with the world is enmity with God, so please take heart. Please take heart to this next element that is also part of being born again. For as it says in the 8th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and by extension us, is if you want to be my follower, you must deny yourself, 
pick up your cross and follow me. That's a daily denial of yourself. That's a daily denial of our pride, the daily denial of we know what is best. And instead, seeking after Christ, seeking after his example, seeking after his caring for your neighbors, and not just the ones that can help you in life, but the ones that cannot. For that's what Christ says, that your neighbor is anyone who is in need. That is what it means to be born again. The Bible says in the 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, he says, Whosoever committeth sin, who, excuse me, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Those are strong words, and even Christians will disagree on the meaning of this. Some will say that's simply to stay away from habitual sin. And yet the statement is clear, the call to Christians is to walk away from sin. These are the words of God calling you to move away from sin, to move away from things that do not honor God. The Bible calls Christians to love the Lord thy God with all their heart. We are turned Christ our heart after he gave it to us. And my question tonight for all of you is where is your heart? Is it filled with the Spirit of God? Does the temple of Holy Ghost reside in you? Or has the circumcision of your heart over time become an uncircumcision? If your conscience is pricked by these words, I challenge you to go back into the Scriptures. I challenge you to pray. I challenge you to think about these things so that you can become a worthy vessel to God. In the Bible, one of the more famous parables is the parable of the talents where a master had three servants and he was going away on a trip and he gave each of the servants some talents, some pieces of gold and he told them to invest them. And after a long way off, he returned and to the one of the servants that he gave five talents of gold the servant was able to turn it into ten, and he gave them back to the master. And the master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. And then he went to the second one who he had given three talents of gold. And he was able to turn that into five talents of gold. And again, he said, well done, my good and faithful servant. And then the last servant who he had given one talent of gold, the servant said he was afraid that he would lose it, so he buried it. And he dug it out of the ground, he gave it back to him and said, here it is. And the master took that talent of gold away from him and gave it to the one that had turned the five into ten. You see, God has great expectations for you in your life. You were born with a purpose and part of that purpose is to serve God and to serve others. And if you ne neglect that purpose, then God will turn away from you. And yet if you receive that purpose, if you're moved by Christ's sacrifice on the cross, if you're willing to change your ways, deny yourself, and be born again, God will provide you the abundance. God will provide you with that greater hope that transcends this life. For our lives will come to an end. We will eventually pass away and yet we will stand before God and make an account of the choices we had. And that is my wish for you, that on that day you can look back on your life with pride. And God will say that to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now to some of you this may seem like a harsh message of conviction, but instead it's a message of hope, it's a message of encouragement. 
we certainly need to be reminded of these things again. Recently, I've been working to kind of control my weight, and one of the things I've done is kind of look at the scale every day, purposing myself to stay consistent and eating the right foods and exercising, trusting in that process that over time, I will be able to achieve my goal. And yet that is for a temporary thing, a, a natural thing that will pass away. What is even more important is that is your spiritual value, your spiritual worth. If there was such a scale and you were on it, what would it say to you? Would it show that you have the spirit of adoption in it? For this is what it says in the book of Romans in the 8th chapter. It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs. And if heirs, heirs of God. And if heirs of God, then join heirs of Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. How can you say you're truly born again if your heart is far from God? Baptism is not enough. It's not enough at one moment in time to proclaim God. That's a cheapening of what He wants for you. God is very much like a, a teacher that wants to draw the potential out of you. A good but strict teacher. In the Bible, Christ teaches us to follow His example, to pick up our cross, to change our ways in a way that mirror His. And if we do that day after day, God will shape us. The Spirit of God will grow inside of us. And Christ's words promises that we will be more than conquerors, more than the temporary things that shall pass away, but rather we be filled with God's goodness, we will be filled with His Spirit. And we will show that when we have His faith, His hope, and belief in His message. Many of you may have tried to live a spiritual life. You may have tried to get away from things like alcoholism or drugs. or many other things that weigh you down in this life and you struggle and you fall back. The Bible says the righteous man may fall six times, but he gets back up. God has not given up on any of you. The Bible says He is patient and He is long-suffering and He is full of hope for you. God believes in you. He believes in you even when you do not believe in yourself. And He calls out to you with that hope, that greater hope in His Son Christ, that you would be moved by His sacrifice on the cross. You would be moved by His belief in you that even if you don't believe that you can do it, you will put your faith in Him and you may surprise yourself. I was reminded of this story and that potential and that God's belief in us. So many times people ask the question, do you believe in God? But actually it starts before that and God has belief in you when He gave you life. I was reminded of this story. It's funny how you can see things in the strangest places. I was reminded of the story of a television show years ago where there was a, a young boy in school who was having all types of trouble in math class. 
and he felt he was lost, but the teacher had a faith in him. And even though the student failed an exam, the teacher threw it away and he reminded him that there will be a test again in two weeks. And he gave him a little smile and that was just enough for the student to believe that maybe he could try a little harder. And wouldn't you know that he turned that F into a B. And he was proud of himself. He was proud of that thing that he did. He was found he was able to kind of dig a little deeper. And he was thinking that he would run to the teacher and the teacher would be overjoyed, going from an F to a B. But that's not what the teacher did. He says, I believe in you. I believe you have more potential. I think you can have an A. Which for the students seemed ridiculous. He was very happy to get a B and he thought that's all there was. But the student didn't want to let the teacher down because the teacher had faith in him. And so he buckled in, he started to study, and unfortunately during that time the teacher died. But because that student had made a commitment to that teacher, he was going to see it through. And so on that test day, he surprised himself, but not his teacher when he did finally get that A. At the end, there's a scene where he's talking to the troop where he says, well done, Mr. Collins. But in a lot of ways, that is God and that is God's relationship with you. Because he made each and every one of us unique in our own way, different backgrounds, different experiences. But he made each of us with a hope, with an ability to be a light, to carry forward his message. And we are vessels. He is the potter and we are the clay. And if you believe in his message, you believe in the transforming power of the gospel, even just a little belief. The Bible speaks of the mustard seed. The mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds there are. And yet, from that small mustard seed, A great bush, a great tree can grow, even by the smallest belief. Just like it did for that student, it can grow into something wonderful in time, and that is what God can do for you. If you start to believe, if you start to allow Him to work on your heart, if you give your heart to Him, if you have that faith, and you carry it forward if you have that hope, that confidence, and what to hope for and the assurance of what you cannot see, little by little things will start to change. That anger some of you may be falling around can be rid. That despair that some of you around can be managed to deal with. Those difficulties in your family's life those generational curses that plague you, whether it be alcoholism or divorce or adultery or cheating, God can work a wonder in you. That is the promise of Christ. If you start to believe, if you start to take those words to heart, if you're not simply a born again on baptism, but a born again on every day of the week, as you wait patiently for that day that you will be joined with the Lord. For the Bible promises this, if you live your life in that way, if you humble yourself, if you deny yourself and you live for Him, that on the end, on the day of judgment, and you stand before Him, there will be no doubt what you will hear. And you will have victory on that day when he says to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that is what I wish for each and every one of you. Even if you have not thought about God for a long time, I hope that this is the day you take his words to heart and you take that next step and you start to think about him. And my Christian brothers and sisters who have backslidden, my Christian brothers and sisters who have been living a Christianity light lifestyle, I call out to you 
It's time to become Christianity strong. It's time to be a capital C Christian because you have a teacher out there, a good shepherd that is calling you home. For the God of the Bible teaches us, talks to us as if we are men and women. And yet many of us, as I did for many years, behave like children to Him. May you take these words to heart. May you stand up. Maybe you become a fervent, strong believer in His Word. And may you be changed. For the Bible says this, it says, Seek the Lord while He may be found, and call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked forsake their evil ways and the unrighteous their thoughts, and return to the Lord where they may receive mercy and be abundantly pardoned. So repent, therefore, and be converted, and let the times of refreshing come in the presence of the Lord. For the Bible says this, those who do righteous things become righteous just as he was righteous. So please walk in righteousness, my brothers and sisters, and take these words to heart. God bless you all.